Howdy folks, this is Willis and unfortunately we're handheld today and what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the tricks to replace the diaphragm on an Aerotrol 2500, 2500 um, irrigation control valve. It's actually trickier than it looks because there are three tricks that you need to figure this out. This is what the top of the valve looks like. This is an older version. The newer version has a handle for the flow adjustment rate uh, control or shutoff control. Now this is going to end up sitting like that with the diaphragm, with the solenoid in the supply side and there's a tiny little <clears throat> nipple here that um, projects into an indexing hole at the base of the uh, base of the valve. The other eight holes are for the screws and uh, the one trick is that um, there is a little o-ring that needs to go on that nipple and uh, I only found that online and I happened to buy another body um, to get all the replacement parts and here's the o-ring that comes out of that body so they've changed the design so I need to use the the old top with the old body and I'll be putting that little o-ring on and hopefully that'll stop the leak. Second trick um, the screws are captive. Um, there are threads inside the cap that keep the screws in position. You don't need to remove the screws entirely. It makes it a lot easier to remove and install. Um, and actually, there are four tricks. Fourth, uh, third trick, use the nut driver. It's so much easier to remove and install the, the bolts using a nut driver. Fourth trick, um, install the diaphragm into the base with the pin and the screw, uh, sorry, pin and the uh, spring on top of it so that when you place the cover down onto this whole assembly, you don't end up pinching the diaphragm between the top and the base. So um, I've messed up three of these diaphragms already simply by not putting the diaphragm on first and then gently centering things. Okay, so let's uh, go and put it together and uh, try to get the camera in a good position here. I will edit that out so uh, you don't get uh, motion sickness. Okay, so first thing is to put the O-ring on the nipple. And that's really key because I've put these guys together so many, this guy together so many times and it leaks like crazy from around the base of the solenoid. So now we've got the diaphragm centered in the valve seat, the valve body. I'm going to gently lower this down. Now try not to disturb any of the relationships and uh, just sort of gently ease that down on and feel that everything is nice and snug and uh, hope that the little o-ring has stayed in place. Then holding that whole assembly in place with left hand, use your drill and nut driver set on the lowest torque setting. And we're going to do a, a star pattern. Sort of go around in crosswise fashion to try to evenly tighten down the bolts like you would do uh, torque down the bolts on the car tire, uh, car wheel. Okay, now I'm gonna increase the torque setting a little bit on the drill and repeat. Okay, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'm gonna go all the way around just to make sure I didn't miss any. I think I did. Okay, so now what we're going to do is uh, turn the water on and see if this uh, leaks straight up. Okay, it's looking good right now. And now we're going to turn the water, uh, activate the system. Um, all right, we've turned the water on. You can hear it running, and uh, water is running through the valve, and there's no leak at the 
at the base of the solenoid. So we've made it better with that stupid little O-ring that came out from this recess on the old valve body. So the uh, old 2500 Eritrol top and uh, body do not fit the new top and body because the this recess is here um, for the O-ring and there's no matching recess on the old body. All right, thanks for helping me make it better. We fixed it.